There's a lot of love for those nostalgic, family-friendly, high-concept blockbusters from the 80s and 90s. Everyone knows the big successful ones like E.T. and Back to the Future, but a more low-budget film which I think deserves more love is the moderately successful The Last Starfighter. Released in 1984, The Last Starfighter follows Alex Rogan, a teenager living in some backwater trailer park whose only amusement comes from an arcade game. After breaking the world record for the high score, Rogan is recruited by an alliance of aliens to become a space fighter pilot. It's an absolutely inspired premise, perfectly playing into that sense of childlike wonder and basically encapsulates everything every teenage sci-fi fan loves – video games, adventure, and space battles. Speaking Speaking of video games though, this video was sponsored by my gaming channel SideQuest. Myself and a few collaborators have been steadily producing a bunch of gaming focused videos, including reviews of some classic video games and let's plays of some not so classic video games. The channel is still relatively early days, so we're still finding our feet, but we have plans for some great content coming soon. So be sure to click the link below to make sure you're subscribed. See you over there. Something which makes The Last Starfighter incredibly important in the history of filmmaking is the pioneering use of computer-generated effects. While the big studio at the time, Industrial Light and Magic, had experimented with CG effects, the technology was still in its infancy. This was years before blockbusters like Terminator 2 and Jurassic Park came out, and a full decade before Babylon 5. Disney had made some strides with Tron, which came out two years earlier, however those effects were designed to depict a video game, whereas The Last Starfighter was the first real attempt to try and create photo-real CGI. The visual effects for The Last Starfighter were produced by Digital Productions, which was not a big effects studio at the time, but a largely independent company who at the time mostly worked on commercials. To think this huge leap in visual effects technology was made by such a small, unassuming company in a way perfectly resembles some of the themes of the film. While obviously the effects don't hold up all that well today, they dazzled audiences at the time and are still very visually appealing today. Good visual effects shots aren't just down to the quality of the effects necessarily but the filmmaking around them, and The Last Starfighter showcases a wealth of visually striking sequences and exciting space battles. It's all achieved with such strong direction that even though much more advanced technology has come along since, these sequences are still very impressive to watch. In fact, at the time, the CGI could have been a lot better, but digital productions had to scale back the quality of their work in order to save on render time and meet the release date. The space battles were originally grander in scope, and environments like the planet Rylos were much more detailed. It would have been great to see what those original shots looked like, but as they are in the film, they work very well. What really makes The Last Starfighter so memorable, however, is that it's just so effortlessly charming and fun from start to finish. It really embodies that Steven Spielberg type of heartwarming family adventure. The film is just packed with delightful, memorable characters and perfectly timed comedy. Some may consider this film to be cheesy or corny, but it's the emotional sincerity which makes it all work. To be honest, I don't really know how the movie wasn't a bigger hit at the time. It certainly has a cult following now, but in my opinion this should have been a true blockbuster. The story totally nails those adolescent feelings of wanting more out of life. The main character and many of those surrounding him are all a bit sick of life in this backwater trailer park, but many of them feel trapped by circumstance. As someone who grew up in a tiny village in the highlands of Scotland, I know the feeling all too well. Listen, Centauri, I'm not any of those guys. I'm a kid from a trailer park. If that's what you think, then that's all you'll ever be. Therefore, it's pure wish fulfillment when Rogan is taken on this grand space adventure. Many critics at the time labelled the movie a Star Wars clone, which I've always found unfair. Star Wars didn't invent space opera after all. In terms of sci-fi world building, I think Star Trek is the closer comparison, with the Star League being this union made up of many different worlds all working together and so on, but honestly, the universe we get a glimpse of works so perfectly well as its own thing, without any comparisons to more well-known franchises. What makes it all work are the relationships between the characters, their distinct personalities, and the sense of humour the film has. Alex Rogan as a character could have been a bland audience surrogate, but Lance Guest gives a very charming and endearing performance throughout. The back and forth he has with his younger brother lead to some of the film's biggest laughs. What's up, Alex? Back to sleep, Lewis, or I'm telling Ma about your playboys. 
The relationship between Alex and his girlfriend Maggie, played by Catherine Mary Stewart, also works very well. Maggie is her own well-rounded character with her own character arc, wants and desires. She isn't just relegated to being a prize for the protagonist, which is always nice to see. It also helps that Guest and Stewart really got on well off camera, as their chemistry certainly comes through on screen. The characters in the trailer park in general feel like one big extended family. As I said, I grew up in a small village and this tight-knit community where everyone knows everyone is something very familiar to me. I've seen some folks say the scene in which a bunch of grown adults are all cheering on Alex as he plays the arcade game is unrealistic, but honestly I just kind of found it lovely. The two characters who absolutely steal the show though are Centauri, played by Robert Preston, and Grig, played by Dan O'Herlihy. Centauri is like this circus showman, always delivering his lines like he's playing to some big audience. It's an incredibly over-the-top performance, but it makes the character extremely likeable. In the hands of a lesser writer, Grig could have easily been this cliched drill sergeant type who slowly softens on the main character. But almost from minute one, O'Hurley he plays the character so warm and friendly. He's this eternal optimist who always pushes Alex to be the best he can be, even when Alex himself has his doubts over whether he can really become a starfighter. I never thought a man who looks like a lizard slash turtle could be so huggable, but here we are, I suppose. And while Alex as a character is overshadowed by these more eccentric personalities, Lance Guest as an actor still gets plenty of opportunities to be just as fun in his dual role as Beta, the duplicate of Alex sent by the Star League to avoid suspicion while Alex is away. Beta drives yet more great comedy as he struggles to understand human social cues and fit into teenage life. The trope has been done before, but the sci-fi twist makes it feel fresh again. Alex, what the hell's going on? Go back to sleep. Lewis! Ultimately, The Last Starfighter is just the epitome of charm in movie form. It's hard to figure out what else to say, frankly. Sometimes the reason a movie works so well isn't particularly complicated. This is simply a film where it seems like everyone was on the same page about what they were making. While you could criticise the paper-thin villain and make other nitpicks here and there, none of it really affects the movie overall to a significant degree. The focus is always on the main character's journey and the journey of those around him. The supporting characters from the Star League or those back in the trailer park all get some kind of heartwarming payoff by the end. It's just wonderful. The outer space action adventure is heaps of fun, propelled by a wonderfully grand sweeping score composed by Craig Safin. Honestly, I'm a little disappointed I never saw this as a kid because I think I would have watched it non-stop. But even as an adult, it's a thoroughly entertaining watch and rekindles some of that childhood wonder. If you're looking for an easy watch which will leave you with a big smile on your face by the end, I cannot recommend The Last Starfighter enough. Al Bam asks, what are your thoughts on J. Michael Straczynski petitioning to become the new showrunner of Doctor Who? I think that's fascinating. Uh, obviously, I'm a huge JMS fan, Babylon 5, his Superman stuff, etc. So I'd be very interested to see what his take on Doctor Who would be like. However, I doubt it would ever happen. I don't know this for sure, but I feel like the BBC would likely only allow a British writer-producer to be the showrunner of Doctor Who. I know a few folk who have pitched things to the BBC, and they're apparently a bit snobbish when it comes to that kind of thing. That being said, if JMS does have a unique take on Doctor Who, I'd be keen to see it in some form. Perhaps he can write for the comic books or something. Nominally Entertained asks, what's your favourite 23rd century Federation ship design? Um, it has to be the USS Excelsior. I love the Constitution class, of course, but the Excelsior is just such a cool looking ship. I sort of think of it like the muscle car version of the Constitution class. I just think it's gorgeous. Andrew A. asks, do you like tea, and if so, how do you drink it? Much like my friends over at Space Dock, this channel is powered almost entirely by tea. My go-to choice is Tetley, but I'm partial to others. Two sugars and very milky. Sugar with the tea bag, pour in the water, stir for a wee bit, squeeze the bag on the side of the mug, and then add the milk. That's the perfect cup of tea in my opinion. Thank you for watching. If you like these videos, subscribe and hit the bell icon to stay up to date on my new uploads. If you want to help the channel grow, join my patrons or my YouTube members where you can see videos early as well as some other exclusive content. Speaking of which, I'd like to quickly thank all of my patrons and members who are now appearing on screen. Have a good one, and as always, live long and prosper.